Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Shiv Kumar, head of the Department of Civil Engineering. Today, in this class, we will discuss about some protective coverings for surfaces of building. Let's start with the introduction. Paint. The paint is a liquid surface coating. On drying, it forms a thin layer of uh, approximately 60 to 150 micron on the painted surface, like wall or a door or any surface like metal surface, etc. Paints are classified as oil paints, water paints, cement paints, bituminous paints, and many more. So there are a variety of paints which is available in the market and which can be used for um, painting our house, industry, and each and everything furniture like sofa set, metal chairs, metal tables, etc. Now the function of paints. What it what is the role of paint when we cover the surface of anything? The function of paint are to protect the coated surface against possible stresses like mechanical or chemical deterioration, which may be a physical or environmental. Decorate the structure by giving smooth and colorful finish. Check penetration of water through RCC or through wall. Check the formation of bacteria and fung uh, fungus, which are unhygienic and give ugly look to the walls or any surface. Check corrosion of the metal structure. Check the decay of wood work and to varnish the surface to display it to better advantage. So major function of the paint is just to protect the surface and provide the aesthetic look or improve the beauty of the surface. Next is the composition of the paint. So based on the requirement, there are uh, the ingredients or composition of the paint may uh, vary, but some basic ingredients are as follows. Like first one is the base. The base usually a uh, metallic oxide is the principal constituent of the paint. It makes the paint film opaque and possess binding properties which reduce the shrinkage cracks in the film on drying. Some of the examples of base are like white lead, red lead, zinc white, aluminum powder, iron oxide, etc. These are used for the inside work. Aluminum powder is used as a base for the all aluminum paints, like just to coat the aluminum surfaces. Next is the vehicle of the base. This is also known as the binder. Vehicle is an oil to which the base is mixed. It holds the constituent of paint in suspension and help them to spread over the surface. It imparts durability, toughness, waterproofness to the painted film and the resistance towards the weathering and also maintain the gloss of the paint. Now, the next is pigments. As you know that paint are having so many colors it may be a blue, it may be a brown, it may be a red, it may be a white, it may be a black. So based on the requirement of the customer, the paints are of multiple colors. But how we produce the, how we make the paint colorful. So there are so many pigments by which we can produce the specific color to the paint. Their general properties are covering power, coloring capacity, fineness, fire resistance, chemical stability, and weather resistance. So they are the, some uh, basic properties of the paint which they possess or a good paint must possess. Now can the artificial mineral pigments obtained by chemical processing of raw materials which include titanium oxide, zinc oxide, lead white, lithophone, chrome oxide, 
red lead, gas, black suit, and metal powder such as aluminum powder, metallic powder, gold dust, etc. These all are contribute the specific color to the paint. Now, the solvent. The solvent are the oils used to thinning of paint or just to increase the spreading power over the surface. These are called thinners. They make the paint workable or in other words, we can say that it increases the workability of the paints consistency and it evaporates during drying and make the thin film of the paint over the surface. The common thinning agents used are petroleum spirit, naphtha, and turpentine, turpentine oil. The turpentine oil is used uh, maximum because it is easily available in the market. Turpentine is used extensively because of high solvent power, ex excellent flattering properties, and ideal rate of evaporation. The next and last is the dryer. Dryer also known as the plasticizer. These are the chemicals which is used in the paint, which accelerate the drying capacity or drying power of the paint. The quantity of dryer is limited to 8%. Excess of it affects the elasticity of paint, leading to flakiness or flakes or flaking failure. Some of the best examples of dryer are litharge, lead acetate, red lead, manganese dioxide, and cobalt, zinc, and lead chromate. Now comes to the adulterants. These adulterants are uh, overall cost reduced weight and increase the durability. Adulterants also help to reduce cracking of dry paints and sometimes help to keep the pigment in suspension. Barium sulfate, calcium carbonate, magnesium, silicate and silica are but a few examples of the fine adult rents. Uh, silica is used only in the undercoat so as to the advantage of its roughness in the development of bond with the next coat. Now come to the second component of the covering or the coating of surface which is known as enamels. The enamels consist of uh, bases like zinc oxide ground in varnish if dried colored pigments may be added they dry quickly and furnish the hard glossy surface enamels can be used for internal as well as external wear and are generally recommended for the application on woodwork so more or less the enamel paints are used for the covering of wooden material that may be a table, that may be a chair, that may be a door, that may be a frame, etc. That may be a cupboard or inside the inner surface of the cupboard. The surface of the wood is rubbed and by the sandpaper and clean. A primer coat is applied of titanium white in pale linseed oil is followed by two or three coats of the enamel paint depending upon the requirement. So, come to the next, which is known as distemper. The distemper is made with base as white shock and thinner as water. Some coloring pigment and glue may be added depending upon the requirement. They are available in the powder and the paste form as well. They are comparatively cheaper than the enamel and the paints. Oil bound washable distempers are available nowadays and this can, this can, this can be washed after, after applying. So it is easy to clean the oil bound distempers. The yield uh, is comparatively durable. Now the varnish. The varnish is the next component which is available in the clear coating or it provides a clear coating like the glossy coating of the object. The object of varnish a surface are to brighten the appearance of the grain input, render brilliancy to the painted surface, protect painted surface from atmospheric action. So, come to the next slide. Characteristics of an ideal varnish. It should render a surface glossy. 
it should dry rapidly and present a finished surface which is uniform in nature and pleasing in appearance. The color of varnish should not fade away when the surface is exposed to atmospheric action. The protecting film developed by varnish should be tough, hard and durable as well. It should not shrink or show cracks after drying. There are some varnish or variety of varnish which we'll discuss in this chapter. So first one is the oil varnish. In this oil varnish, linseed oil is used which takes around 24 hours to dry. Hard resins such as amber, copal is dissol are dissolved in the linseed oil and make the oil varnish for the exterior as well as interior work. Spar varnish. Drivers it uh, drives its names from its use as a, on spars and other parts of ships. It gives a sticky effect in warm weather. Now the flat varnish. Materials such as wax, metallic soap or finely divided silica when added to varnish produce a dull appearance on drawing which are known as the flat varnish. A spirit varnish. It is a resin of soft variety such as lac or shellac which is dissolved in the spirit and uh, it is also a uh, best example of the French polish, lacquer and shellac varnish. It dries very quickly. These are not durable and are easily affected by the weathering action of the environment. For an example, if the sunlight coming or directly coming to the surface, so it may be uh, affected by the environmental condition and it's not a durable product. The next is asphalt varnish. It is made by dissolving melted hard asphalt in the linseed oil with a thinner such as turpentine or petroleum spirit. It is used over the fabricated steel works. Most of the time the asphalt varnish is available in the black color. Next is the water varnish. It is made by dissolving the shellac in the hot water uh, in enough quantity of either ammonia, borax, soda or potash is added to that. These are used for varnishing maps and pictures and these are comparatively durable. Next is a French polish. It is a type of spirit varnish prepared by dissolving resins in the methylated spirit in the room temperature and use on the hardwood substances to hide the grain defects. The surface is made smooth by rubbing. A filler mixed with the desired color is prepared to the desired consistency of a paste applied to the crack, ghost, etc. The surface is rubbed after drying with the sand paper and after that we may apply two three coats depending upon the requirement or at, as per the desired finish. The next is wax polish. It consists of beeswax dissolved in turpentine oil and used to highlight in the grains over wooden surfaces. The polish is rubbed with the sandpaper and generally two to three coats were, are applied just to make the finished surface. Some of the miscellaneous paints are as follows like asbestos paint. The main constituent is fibrous asbestos. These are used to stopping leakage in the metal roof, painting of spouts, gutter, etc. Sometimes the outer surface of basement wall prevent the dampness. Asbestos paint can be used. The, as, as far as the name is concerned, asbestos paint. So it is also used for uh, make the surface fireproof or sometimes we may use this paint in the oven or the furnace. Now the bituminous paint are made after dissolving the asphalt bitumen in the mineral spirit of naphtha. They are in black color and used to cover the metal surfaces like railings, grills, and it is very durable in the exposed surface. Next is bronze paint, generally a pigment such as aluminum or copper powder is used uh, with the vehicle like nitrocellulose liquor. They are highly reflective and applied on the 
radiators casein paints casein is a basically a protein substance extracted from milk curd is mixed with the base like whitening and lithofoam they are available in powder or paste form they are used over a newer surface wall or ceiling a dry varnish is added when these are used over the exterior surface of the building the casein paints can be tinted or any color next is rubber paint rubber treated with the chlorine gas is dissolved in the solvent desired pigment is added that may be a red that may be a green that may be a yellow these paints are resistant to acid alkali and dampness rubber paints based paints are uh, generally used to, uh, on the concrete and cement plaster surfaces just to protect from the damp conditions next is cellulose paint these are made from the celluloid sheet after dissolving in the desired solvent also known as the lacquers they are colloidal dispersion of cellulose derivatives resins and plasticizers in solvent and dilutants castor oil is also added to improve the adhesion toughness and smoothness of the paint film a cellulose paint hardens by evaporating the thinning agent whereas an ordinary paint hardens by oxidation so this is the basic difference in between cellulose paints and other paints being a very costly their use is restricted to painting cars ships aeroplanes the trade name are spray paints or duco paints which is commonly used for the painting of cars next is cement based paint is code 5410 white or colored portland cement or opc 65% may be used to form the base they are thinned with water during application proper curing is necessary for strength and durability cement paints are durable strong and display better waterproofing qualities and are used for exterior surface of the uh, for the painting of a building mixed with boiled linseed oil and are also used over corrugated iron sheet to good get good result an aqueous solution of sodium silicate and zinc sulfate may be applied as a primer coat on the surface to be painted the next is are plastic paints these are very common paints they use plastic as a base with water as thinner they have high covering capacity and give a very neat and decorative pleasing look appearance to the surface owing to their high cost the plastic paints are mainly used for the interiors of auditoriums showrooms modern houses offices reception areas etc a typical composition of 1 liter of plastic emulsion paint is 0.2 gram of binder so this is about the paints varnishes distempers and enamel paints in the next topic we'll meet again with some more knowledge about bitumen tar and asphalt till then thank you very much to all of you for listening me on this lecture protective covering and paints so i will welcome you all or waiting for you for my next lecture till then goodbye thank you